So the public sector scaled back in the 80s by selling public corporations. Uh, we know outsourcing is going on, but if you insist on really saving money and keeping taxing, taxes or borrowing down, do you have to start thinking about that third wave, substantially retreating from state-funded services? Well, joining me now is the Conservative MEP, Daniel Hannan, the Conservative MP, David Willits, Mariana Matsukata, who's Professor of Economics at the University of Sussex, and the writer, Will Hutton, whose new book is called How Good Can We Be? Good evening to you all. Uh, Daniel Hannan, let me start with you. If, if the next Conservative government, if there is to be one, wants to get public spending and borrowing down, should they carry on just pairing a little bit here and there? Or are there some big decisions they should make, some functions? They should just say, look, we have to get out of something altogether. Well, you know, you just showed the 1980s there. And contrary to almost universal belief, public spending in absolute terms grew every year that Margaret Thatcher was prime minister. But the state, as a percentage of the economy, shrank because the private sector outgrew the public sector. And that's, that should be the normal state of affairs. We have uh, unlimited human enterprise left to themselves, entrepreneurs will always be smarter than state bureaucrats. And so the state will kind of be left like one of those uh, jungle ruins, you know, some ruined temple in India where the, the great spray of green has just smashed through the flagstones and choked it because there will always be more essence, more vitality, more growth. And so you don't really need to cut to bring down the proportion. But I think you're just dodging a debate, aren't you? Don't we have to have a debate about all the functions? All the things that say, don't you want a debate about well, all the things the state does? Do you believe it should do health? And there, are, pensions, there are lots and lots child of things. Care, oh, I mean, those things. Let, let's go for well, the lowest what you hanging ones. Okay, let's go yeah. for the lowest hanging yeah. ones. Uh, massive subsidies from people on low and medium incomes through their energy bills to wealthy landowners who happen to have uh, space to have uh, alternative energy rackets. Likewise, massive subsidies to people who happen to be profiteering from the common agricultural policy through higher food bills for everyone else. 17 billion a year to belong to the world's only shrinking trade bloc, the, the European Union. Plus, I would say, if, if you, I mean, you know, I'm not speaking for any future government, you just asked me. A, yeah, no, I want your personal. I mean, the, uh, the extent of in-work benefits and uh, tax credits that Gordon Brown created, which didn't really exist up until then, we were getting by perfectly well without them. I think there's, th those are some of the areas which I would say are inessential spending. Mm. But you would keep all the core areas, health, education, defence, obviously. Oh, as I say, it's amazing how far you can cut. I mean, you, you had that whole uh, clip of Duncan Weldon talking about the 1930s. When the crash came, there was a Labour Chancellor, Philip Snowden, and he commissioned a, the, the May report to look into where to cut, and he said, we're going to go back to the spending of three years ago, because if we could, if we could get by three years ago, then Plainly, it's not essential spending. And you know what? That was, that was enough to bring the, the, the country back into surplus. Mariana, is he right? Well, I mean, first of all, I think that there is almost no statistical evidence that there's any relationship between the size of the state and growth. The question is, you know, how you actually, uh, um, you know, work all these different departments, the kind of people you can attract to work in them. And there's a self-fulfilling prophecy, I think, that the more we bash the state, you know, using sentences like the one you just used, which, you know, no government bureaucrat will ever be as smart as a private, you know, businessman entrepreneur, the less able we will be able to get, you know, really smart, uh, you know, graduate students to come and work in government, for example. And I mean, this is one of the really interesting areas, I think, that if you actually look at the U.S. government, which is often, you know, described to us as small, it's actually quite big, and it's mission-oriented, and it's been actually able to attract sort of leaders like, you know, a Nobel Prize-winning physicist running the Department of Energy, um, because there is sort of a mission mm. to use, you know, spending the strongest to... Growth, the strongest growth I can remember in all the time I was in Belgium uh, as a member of the European Parliament was when there was no government. Uh, GDP <laughs> took off because there were no laws. But actually, what I really, <laughs> what I think is really interesting, <laughs> we're, we're missing what I think is quite important, which is, which is a basic philosophical or moral argument, which is the difference between you or me choosing to give money to a good cause and the taxman confiscating it from us through coercive taxation and spending it on our behalf. It seems to me that it must be preferable to give people the opportunity to behave with virtue than to try and compel it. Will, will, will Hutton? Well, I, just that language of the co coercive taxation, I mean, I would argue that taxation is the fee you, a citizen pays for the public mm -hmm. goods that you require. What's wrong with coercive? What happens what, if you don't pay the, it? You, but, you go to prison. Yeah. I think that I think it's something you, you de all public goods are universally available. 
and you don't want anyone free riding on on everyone else's efforts. So, so of course, you, of course, you, yeah, but it, but you use a, it's a majority of adjectives. So you you would raise the temperature by doing that, and you well, and you. Yeah, yeah, that's it's much no, more no, accurate no, no, than no. saying we're asking no, people but, to uh, contribute but, a little no, bit but more. But they say no, they go But there's lots of you know you don't have to be pejorative about it. You know, I'm saying, and I you know that actually you know. There's interdependencies between public and private that actually human beings associate. They have obligations to each other. They want to express them. And actually one of the ways you express them is through public activity. That's why there's public infrastructure, a bridge. Uh, but look, we're going back to absolute basic principles. Will, can I just ask you, I, I just want to bring it, a, root it in this okay. next in government's here challenge. Okay. Here and now. I mean, I mean, do you think we can get down to, say, 35% of national income on the British measure of these things, 35% without redefining the boundaries of what the state does. You have to redefine the boundaries. If you want to get you can't to that... Slide, slide. You ha already, and you just take an area like the criminal justice system, you know, already it's taken, you know, whether it's the Crown Prosecution Service, police, probation, legal aid, have taken swinging hits. They will take further swinging hits, as was said by the IFS, because they're unprotected. That means that, you know, the notion of how, you know, we in Britain, in this civilization, conceive justice will be transformed. Now, you may say, that's fine, because you don't want to have these dreadful coercive taxes that Dan has been talking about it. I would say that actually those are things that I certainly would vote right. for, I certainly want, and I would be prepared, to be prepared to pay taxes for. And judging by the YouGov poll, most of my fellow citizens would too. David Willits, I want you to arbitrate a bit here. You're not uh, on the same wing of the party as Daniel Hannan. But we've got a clear divide between whether you have to redefine the state if you want to go on down or whether you can just let the rest of the economy grow and the state hold back. Where are you on that? Well, I must confess that even before I was a politician, I was an official in the Treasury. And the way that you have to do things if you're sitting in the Treasury is a combination. First of all, you are permanently pressing all departments for efficiency savings. And if you look at our record in government, uh, in autumn statements, in budgets, George Osborne would say, I want 1% off or 2% off. You've got to do things better. And that is absolutely right. Good housekeeping, a universal principle. And then secondly, you also do re you mould public spending in accordance with your priorities. And actually, I didn't completely agree with Will's example. I think there's a pretty deep social trend that there is more civility and less crime. The, cri the murder rate in London is now at its lowest for decades. It is reasonable to respond to that by saying that the kind of levels of policing that we assumed we needed can be reduced. I mean, in my own area... The response I times are, you know... Response times are lengthening. Uh, 999 calls aren't being responded to as quickly as they were. You know, the number of prison well, officers per, 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 per prisoner is kind of, kind of falling away dramatically. You know, prisons are overcrowded. Yeah. Suicide rates are yeah. exploding. I mean, there's no, no, I mean, let's, 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 let's be. But you also know, and this is what all governments do, that as technology changes and social circumstances change, people's priorities change. And I mean, because Margaret Thatcher's that quote, she was right, wasn't she? We do now think that Pickford's and Glen Eagles would be absurd things for the public sector yeah. to I own. wanted your view on that, Mariana. I mean, Margaret Thatcher said, yeah, what were we doing owning Pickfords? It does sound a bit faintly quaint now that the state might own Pickfords or Glen Eagles Hotel. Yeah, but again, I mean, you know, everything's in the detail. So look at, say, French Telecom, which is still, you know, has a big public uh, ownership, is one of the most innovative um, telephone companies in the world. Uh, the same, you know, uh, um, Italian telecom, Telecom Italia, uh, when it became privatized, cut almost all its R&D. So it all, you know, well, it depends. So I don't think there's any It depends how you run right. a public company. No, I, no, and I think that's, again, actually an mm -hmm. argument we heard in the clip that's correct. People used to say in the 80s, you don't need to privatize it. They can just run themselves better in a marketplace. The truth is that shifting the ownership did matter. And, but the governments will be changing... Sorry, how do you get then that the French one is quite efficient, the French... Telecom is quite efficient. Well, I don't know about the French. What well, I do know is that the productivity transformation in every nationalised industry that we privatised was massive. And there was an argument against Margaret Thatcher in 79. Don't worry. It doesn't matter who owns them. Who owns them does matter. But governments will be able to set priorities. I mean, looking back on my own experience, universities and science minister. On universities, we took a big decision that we should shift the financing of universities to graduates, not students, but to graduates, and save significant public spending. On the other half of my responsibilities on science, I'm unashamedly in favour of the government spending more on science, because I think it's something only government can do. So there, within my own responsibilities, if you look at the figures, you'll see big reductions in public spending on one side, and support on the other side. And those are the kind of decisions that ministers have to make. You know, I mean, like, this whole idea that, you know, for example, I mean, even this word that was being used before, you know, the... Um, 
the public good. If you look at science, for example, if government really was just focusing on the classic public good problem, right? So basic research, high spillovers, um, private companies will not be spending on that because they can't appropriate the returns, then you wouldn't have actually gotten the kind of sort of innovation hubs of the world, including Silicon Valley, where actually government had an eye on the whole innovation chain, was funding also applied yes. research, even early stage yes. funding of companies, because the private yeah. venture capital and industry wants that. That's I agree with you about but that. there's a vision about I, that. I, I so, I mean, right where's the vision? Whether well, it's health, but, but, education, but Daniel innovation. Daniel described it as weeds. I mean, Daniel described that. Or, mm. you know, there, I mean, I don't think that, you know, you've just described how, you know, in Silicon Valley, actually public endeavor has been quite crucial to the emergence of that high tech kind of marvel. Um, it's not weeds that have actually kind of inhibited it. It's been, there's yeah. been a kind of interdependence between public and private. And yes. actually, w you know, mm -hmm. yes. whether, whether it's, you know, yeah. whether it's the print, whether it was the Gutenberg printing press, you know, it, <laughs> you know there's been, there's yes. always been well, some, there's always been a, today, there's always, there's always been, there's always been yes. a public, Correct. there's always been a public body kind of yes. underwriting, triggering, and, and, catalyzing and today, private endeavor. And today in Birmingham, George Osborne has announced more expenditure on exactly that type of thing. Daniel, yeah, yeah, I really, like I really want to come back to the, the basic point that Will was arguing, which is that implying that you know if you if you believe in human cooperation you believe in in more state uh, you won't find anyone who is not more you, believe you, won't, in a you state, won't find anyone state. arguing against human cooperation i mean i i can't believe i'm having to say that you know let, let's take it as read that no one is arguing for some completely atomized society where nobody talks to anything else think of the incredible collaboration that happens all around us in the free market without us noticing. Think, think of the collaboration that goes into the, the, the can of baked beans that you buy, the, the, the melting and smelting, the, 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 the label, all the flavors, and you can buy that for 67p. What a miracle that is if we only open our eyes. You find me one this state is... measure, one minimum wage, one tax, that has done more for people on low incomes than the miracle of and 67p baked beans that you, you can buy on you can't answer uh, that question. nine minutes or out of time. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sure you can do it and we can, we can do it afterwards. <laughs> Thank you all very much indeed. <laughs>